some are hanging on just a little bit longer. And with the change into fall and winter, we need to study baroclinic lows a little bit closer. Now, baroclinic lows are basically low pressure systems involving contrasts between air masses. And this is a famous, I'm not sure famous, but classic diagram published by Palman and Newton in 1969. And this shows the transition from a stable wave to a developing Baird Clinic system, becoming mature and finally occluding on the third panel here. So this involves a warm air mass and a cold air mass up to the north. The dashed lines are 1,000 through 500 millibar thickness. In other words, the mean temperature in the lowest three kilometers. And that's exactly what we use on our surface charts each episode. In fact, I don't think there's any YouTube programs anywhere that go through the weather in that much detail. I mean, do you know anybody using thickness charts? We go through the whole smorgasbord here, and we also have the upper air contours. These are basically streamlines up at 500 millibars, so that's going to be the middle troposphere. So what do we see here? The dashed lines, thickness, that's kind of like average isotherms in the lower and mid-levels. And what we see here is cold air up to the north, warm air down to the south, and those thickness lines, those isotherms, separate the two. And we've got this gradient right here. And you can see that that's stacked up mostly behind the front. So that's the front right there. And just up to the north, we find the gradient. We don't find the gradient on top of the front. We don't find it to the south. It's way back here on the cold side. And as that low pressure area develops, you can see that deepening and those isobars really start forming a spider web pattern. And you can see the cold air pouring back in behind. There's that thickness troughing. That's the cold air advection coming in on the back side. And over here, warm advection. And so we get overrunning with rain and oftentimes mixed precipitation. And then as it continues evolving further, the cold front catches up to the warm front and kind of closes off that center right there. You can see the low disappearing off into the cold air. The cold air wraps around the entire low pressure system. That right there is the occlusion. That's the triple point. And we find new development, new bear clinic development, somewhere down in here on the tail end. And that becomes this. So it's certainly a circle of life, if you want to call it that. And this is the kind of thing that we're going to be seeing on these surface charts pretty regularly. And just a couple more features. Look at that right there. That's the upper level low. The low pressure center at 500 millibars located right there. And you can see that's pretty much right on top of the cold air. You can see those thickness contours right there. That's the bulk of the cold air mass. And that 500 millibar low slopes off towards the east, towards the surface low. Or I should say a better way of saying that is. The low slopes upwards with height towards the cold air. You can clearly see that there. So let's put this into practice. This is this afternoon's weather chart up in the northern Pacific where we do have some weather going on right now. There's our surface low. You can see the cold air advection back in behind that, and it's already occluded. There's the occluded front and the triple point well down to the south. The warm air mass located down in this region, and we've got varying cold air masses up to the north. So the warm air advection region right here, and you can see that's associated with extensive precipitation. And on the backside, cold air advection, that tends to be a drying area. But we have one little area of showers right here where significant air mass modification has taken place that very cold air coming from the north, spilling out over relatively warm waters. A little closer to home, here's what we have this afternoon. Not very much going on in the central U.S., a weak frontal system coming out of the plains, 
and temperatures a little bit mild down there in Texas. The only 80s that we find are around Austin and Del Rio. A stronger front coming up from the Pacific Northwest, temperatures behind that in the 50s and 60s. And then in the northeastern U.S., we've got this other backdoor front, some easterly wind components here and there. And north of that front, we've got temperatures in the 50s and 60s in New England. Down in the Gulf Coast region, significant thunderstorm activity. So our air mass is very likely uncapped and devoid of any upper ridging. So we've either got strong westerlies aloft or we have troughing up at 500 millibars in this region. And we can take a quick look at that. In fact, I'll give you one clue. Look at that little cold pocket. This is a center of very cold thickness values. That's centered over Albuquerque where temperatures are 63 right now. So very likely in the upper levels, there's probably an upper level low. So that puts this area under westerlies. And there's the 500 millibar chart showing upper level low over northern New Mexico. And a jet from northern Mexico into the Dallas and Oklahoma City area. So no ridging to be found where we have those storms. You have to go all the way out into the Gulf to actually find that. And those heights are not terrifically strong either. So what that means is if we construct a SKU T, I'm going to put that out here in Louisiana, in the air that's not really overturned. And you can see that temperatures in the mid-levels are fairly cool. In other words, the red part of the SKU T is not going about like that, which we would see in a ridge. So we've got some instability in the lowest half of the troposphere. And as a result, capes are near 1,000. And that's enough to support some showers and storms. And we've already gone over this map, but it does show significant cold air. In fact, if I pull this map down and go way up there towards Siberia, that is pretty much the axis of the colder air coming southward. So coming right through the eastern Bering Sea into the Aleutians and temperatures with that widespread 30s. In the central Arctic, central Canadian Arctic, a little weather system coming through that region, a little bit of snow up there. In eastern Canada, the dominant feature is this high pressure area over northern Quebec. And we can see that right in the core of that, there's actually some warmer air. Those 550 or 555 decameter contours located right there. So the actual cold air is further up north. And this represents kind of a transitional zone. Down to the south, Newfoundland, the Maritimes getting some rain. And if we go further into the Atlantic, we've got Hurricane Sam, a high end category four storm. Fortunately, that's not heading for the U.S. It's heading directly to the north and looks like it's going to interact with this cold front, which is coming out of the Maritimes and New England. And there is the official page from the National Hurricane Center showing SAM 130 knots, high-end Category 4, and a somewhat impressive 937 millibar center. And you can see that it's moving north at 17. And then we've got Tropical Storm Victor a little bit further out to the east, but very much like all of the previous systems, they are recurving significantly. So it looks like this one is not going to be a hazard to the U.S. At least it doesn't look like it at this time. And the five-day tropical outlook, not really showing any problems. So we bring our attention back to North America. And we can see a very turbulent pattern in the upper levels. The main polar front jet up there in Canada, you can see it's slamming British Columbia with some impressive energy. And down to the south, two cutoff lows, one over the southwest, which we talked about, and the other associated with that occlusion in Newfoundland. In between that, a little bit of ridging, so some warm weather from Alabama, 
up to the Great Lakes, and another trough coming in on the west coast. And due to the significant creation of vortices that we've been seeing lately south of the jet, this could also shear off. In fact, when we see what it's going to do. And so we look at that trough on the west coast, and we see a little low does shear off, but it wanders out into the Pacific. That could be a factor maybe in about a week. Eventually it's going to be picked up. Yeah, there it goes right there, heading into Arizona for midweek next week. So that'll be our next big change. And then a rather significant trough coming onto the west coast. That'll be a factor for at least the northwestern U.S. I'm not sure it's going to make it into the central U.S. due to this long wave ridging. And then we have this other low right here. Where did that come from? Another trough that sheared off. And that'll hang around in the southeast U.S. for much of the week next week. So things are getting active. Now, this time of year, I like to look at the temperature anomaly, not at the surface, but just above the surface. And there's a product on Pivotal Weather. If you go into this menu here, there's 850 millibar temperature anomaly. That helps get rid of some of the diurnal effects and lets you really track these air masses. Now, what we see starting out, there's that powerful system out there in the Gulf of Alaska and lots of cold air on tap, a lot of it heading south. And then out in Canada, you can see temperatures are above normal at 850. So this is kind of your outlay of your air masses. And then going forward, you can see that cold air slingshotting into British Columbia. So those rains and mountain snows are going to get going. Things warm up in the northern plains. Canada looking pretty warm out in the prairies. And then gradually we get the specific system moving south. A lot of this energy working down the coast for late next week. So, yeah, it's going to be a cold one there in California. Definitely don't want to see that heat this time of year. That's usually where your wildfire problems are. So the cold air, Pacific air, settles into the western U.S. And then looks like round two coming for around the 10th or 15th. That looks like a really cold one. So your fronts are going to be, I don't know, set up maybe something like that. Some of that cold air does make it onto the Great Plains, but it looks like the majority of it actually modifies. So I'm not too sure if we're going to see that in the eastern half of the country. Looks kind of mild and kind of a continuation of the pattern that we have right now. And that's 15 minutes. That's our sweet spot. I do want to thank Michael Rose, our newest Patreon supporter. Michael Rose has been here for several years. He used to join us during the live webcasts back in 2016. And I'm glad to have you back, Michael and Thomas Wozencraft. I appreciate your upgraded pledge. And if you're not able to support us, that's okay. But please consider checking out weathergraphics.com and picking up a book or some software. That's a good direct way to support this program. And hopefully we can keep these videos coming. Anyway, I hope you all have a great first weekend of October. Take care and we will see you Monday for the supporters and Wednesday for everybody else. Have a good one. Bye-bye.